Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for July 19th, 2021. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, I'm Scott and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Um, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev channel, dev text channel, and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, or <laughs> shortly thereafter, depending on how how uh, our Mondays are going, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. Uh, if the meeting time is changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. Uh, this meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you're still welcome to participate. Uh, the video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. Um, there is a note stock to accompany the meeting and the recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document. We'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Uh, check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc. Um, in, this meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community, it's a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up uh, what we've been on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can kind of come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. So with that, I will. Uh, get started with community news. So this is a section where we cover all things um, CircuitPython and Python on hardware related and sometimes just Python in general. Uh, first up, um, sorry, I'm taking time codes. The README podcast, uh, this is a podcast from GitHub uh, titled Changing the Hardware Development Game at Adafruit. Uh, the README podcast presents changing the hardware development game at Adafruit, how Lamore Freed paves the way for millions of makers. There's a GitHub link. Uh, thank you to Foamy Guy for posting the link in the chat for folks to follow along. Um, next up, uh, CircuitPython Day is August 6th. Uh, that is next month. Set your calendars. Um, 8-6-2021 is the snakiest day of the year. It's also this year's CircuitPython Day. The day highlights all things CircuitPython and Python on hard hardware. Working with CircuitPython, mm -hmm. tag your projects, hashtag CircuitPython Day 2021 on social media and Adafruit will look to highlight them. Uh, tentative activities are at 1 p.m. Eastern, Jeff, Dan, and Katni will discuss CircuitPython. At 3 p.m. Eastern, a CircuitPython board tour with Lady Ada. And at 5 p.m. Eastern, I uh, will have a deep dive, uh, which is the normal time. I'm not sure what we'll do, but uh, it should be a good a good time. Um, if you have a project, plan on being on Adafruit Show and Tell on Wednesday 8-4 uh, on the 4th, or post them on social media tagging CircuitPython Day 2021. Uh, let us know what you have planned, and we'll help uh, and promote. Tag your social media posts with CircuitPython Day 2021 and email to cpnews at adafruit.com so we can see it. And next we have... The Adafruit I.O. Whippersnapper. We're looking for beta testers. 
Uh, Adafruit is starting to expand the beta program for Adafruit IO Whippersnapper. If you don't know already, Adafruit IO Whippersnapper is a no-code IoT interface for Adafruit IO. It lets you turn any Wi-Fi capable board into an IoT device without any programming. Simply select what devices are connected to which pins on the hardware and it will auto configure the firmware and even create an IO feed for visualization. The service is 100% free. All you need is an Adafruit.com account. For more information on how to get invited, see the blog post there that Phone the Guy posted. Um, it's on the Adafruit blog for those of you listening. Uh, next up, the CircuitPython GitHub repository exceeds 2,500 stargazers. The CircuitPython GitHub repo uh, exceeded 2,500 stargazers this week. Thank you to all the people who have chosen to star the CircuitPython code repository. Uh, next up, hack chat with Adafruit's Lady Ada on July 21st. That's Wednesday of this week at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Especially over the last year and a half, most of us have gotten the feeling that there's little distinction between our computers and ourselves. We seem welded together, inseparably even, attached as we are day and night to our machines as work, life, and home life blend into one gray, featureless landscape where time passes, unmarked except by the accumulation of food wrappers and drink cans around our work areas. Or maybe it just seems that way. Regardless, there actually is a fine line between machine and operator, and in most instances, it's the electromechanical accessory that we all love to hate, the keyboard. If you buy off the shelf, it's never quite right. Too clicky, not clicky enough, wrong spacing, bad ergonomics, or just plain ugly design. The only real way around these limitations is to join the DIY keyboard crowd and roll your own, specifically customized to your fingers and your needs. At least until you realize that it's not quite perfect and you need to modify it again. Hitting this moving target is often as much a software problem as it is a hardware issue, but it, as is increasingly these days, Python is ready to help. Go into depth on how Python can be leveraged for custom keyboard builder. Our good friends at Adafruit, including Lamore, Lady Ada Freed, Philip Tyrone, Dan Halbert, Katni Rember, and Scott Shawcroft will stop by the hack chat. We suspect that they'll all have some cool stuff to show off, in addition to sharing their tips and tricks for making DIY keyboards just right. If you're building custom keys, or even if you're just keyboard curious, you won't want to miss this on Hackaday and YouTube. So check that out. That's Wednesday uh, this week at noon. <laughs> great, great write-up from the Hackaday folks. Uh, there's a new book, uh, Visual Studio Code for Python Programmers. A new book just out is a huge boon to Python developers looking to use the free Visual Studio Code editor, aptly named Visual Studio Code for Python Programmers by April Spite. Uh, Spate, maybe? Um, there's an Adafruit blog with a review and an Amazon link. Next, uh, projects using the new GitHub Copilot AI knowledge base. Uh, users continue to test the technical preview of GitHub Copilot to see what it can do. Here are a couple of examples to note. Uh, first, Copilot writes a text-based game in Python at sandyuraz.com, S-A-N-D-Y-U-R-A-Z.com. And then second up uh, in examples, there's a Copilot importer. Why write code when you can import it directly from GitHub Copilot? And that's a link to pypi.org. Um, next up, I know we have lots of community news, but there's lots of stuff going on. Um, 30,000 thanks for the Adafruit Discord community. The Adafruit Discord community, where we do all our CircuitPython development in the open, reached over 300,000, not 300, 30,000 humans, sorry. Uh, Adafruit Blues Discord offers a unique way for CircuitPython folks to connect. Join today at the URL adafru.it slash discord. And uh, just an early hug report for Mr. Certainly, who helps us track uh, community growth uh, week to week. Next up, uh, usually I don't advertise this in community news, but um, my deep dives happen every week. Um, last week I wanted to advertise it, or I wanted to advertise last week's because uh, Jimmo, who works on MicroPython, hung out with me for uh, two hours to really dive deep on the native emitter and uh, a bug that involved looking at x86 assembly. So. Uh, I really highly, uh, if you want to get really in the weeds of MicroPython and see 
how awesome uh, Jim and Damien and, and the Micropython Fox folks are, uh, I recommend giving that a, a view. And, and the bonus is you don't have to see that you had to wait like 20 minutes for me to get it working. Um, all right, uh, second or last up uh, before we cover the newsletter, uh, there the type the Talk Python podcast uh, of MicroPython and CircuitPython is now available online. Uh, episode three hundred and twenty-five uh, is uh, Damian George from MicroPython along with myself from CircuitPython and Adafruit is now online at TalkPython.fm and YouTube. So check that out. Uh, it was really awesome to do the collaboration with Damien on that, so I recommend it as well. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, this has been a preview of the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub. Just look at the drafts folder under the github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter repo and submit a pull request. You can do that by clicking the uh, pencil icon in the top right. You may also tag a tweet with hashtag circuitpython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com and we'll see it and we'll snag the things for that. Whew, lots of awesome community news. Thank you to all the contributors and thank you to Anne in advance for compiling all of, or for compiling all that. Okay, uh, next up in our second section of the meeting, we have state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Um, this is kind of a statistical overview of the health of the project and kind of the major components. Uh, so overall, uh, we had 50 pull requests merged from 16 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors. I think most of those names look familiar, so thank you for uh, those folks who continue to contribute. Um, Bob the Chemist might be a new one. Uh, uh, we had 11 reviewers for those 50 pull requests, so uh, thank you to all the folks doing reviewing. It, it, it allows us to scale up an author, so we're always looking for more reviewers. We're happy to help get you going. Uh, Issue-wise, we had 44 closed issues by 13 people and 15 opened by 13 people which means we're net down quite a lot. Um, what is that, 29 um, that we're net down? So that's awesome. Thank you to everybody who's working on closing issues. Um, now let me talk a bit more specifically about the core. We had 20 pull requests merged for the core from 12 different authors. I think Adam Cummick might actually be, and Bob the Chemist are relatively new, so thanks to them. We had six reviewers. Uh, thank you to all of our reviewers. And we have six open poll requests, which is probably the, the least amount of open poll requests we've had in quite a while. Um, so that's really, really awesome. Um, so thanks to everybody who made that happen. Issues wise, we had 35 closed issues by six people, nine opened by seven people uh, for a total of 452 open issues. So we made some really good headway. Uh, and that was because we uh, went through our milestones and took a look at more issues. Um, so we ha we now have six active milestones. Uh, we have new milestones for 7XX, which is like bug fixes that we would do after 7.0 is actually released. We also have an 8.0.0 uh, milestone now as well, um, which is for uh, like API changes that we're making. So usually what we'll do is we'll have an API work and the new API, the old API and the new API work for a major version. And then in the subsequent major version, we'll remove the old way of doing it. So um, that's why we're seeing an 8.0 milestone right now. So the 8.0 milestone issues will be things that um, we've updated 7.0 so that both ways work. And then we assign it to, to 8 when we need to remove the old way in 8.0. So we have... Uh, 37 open issues for the 7.0 stable. Uh, most of those are assigned, so we're going to make some really good headway. Uh, we have six open for the 7.x.x, and we have one open for the 8.0. Sorry for the backing up noise. Um, and we also have one issue that's not assigned a milestone. That's uh, an impression of uh, what we have left to triage. So overall for the core, uh, Dan, Jeff, Catney, and I went over the 7.0 issue milestone list and decided which things we want to finish for 7.0. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> we'll continue doing pre-releases as we work through these issues. Uh, please let us know if there if there are things that you think we should be should, that should be done for seven O that aren't marked with that milestone. Um, and folks say in the chat that Mister certainly thought the backup noise was in there. In, outside their window and Jerry's dog just went running to the window to because of the beeping as well. So sorry about that folks. Um, my window is open because it's hot in here. Uh, and with that, let me kick it over to Katni for an update on the libraries. Thanks, Scott. So uh, we have um, this this applies to all of the Adafruit circuit Python libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore circuit Python underscore along with a few other goodies like cookie cutter and the community bundle. So across all of those repos, we had 23 pull requests merged by six authors and eight reviewers. Uh, the oldest one of those that was merged was 37 days old. Um, the rest were a week or less, which leaves us with 50 open pull requests. We had seven issues closed by seven people and six opened by six people, leaving us with 319 open issues. If you're interested to, in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, um, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. It has all this information and more, including a list of open pull requests and a list of open issues. You can search the issues by label if you are looking for uh, something you're new to everything and you're looking for something to work on, check out good first issues. If you're looking for something more complicated, bug or enhancement are an excellent place to start. Um, you can find something that interests you, leave a comment and let us know that you're working on it. Um, we are always available to help you learn how to do this. There are There's a guide on um, contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. And um, in terms of reviewing, you can check out the open pull requests. Uh, take a look at syntax, take a look at spelling. Uh, if you don't have the hardware, if you do have the hardware, give it a test. And if it works for you, then let us know. And once you're comfortable with that, we can look at leveling you up to joining our review team. We're always looking for more reviewers. As Scott said, uh, the more reviewers we have, the more authors we can support. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had two new libraries, Adafruit Circuit Python Pixel Buff and Adafruit Circuit Python Macropad, both courtesy of me, a little bit exciting there. <laughs> Um, and a number of updated libraries, uh, the list of which I will not read off, but it is in the notes. Um, and it's always available at circuitpython.org slash libraries. Uh, overall, if you are, or we're, we're working through updating, uh, libraries and example code to work with breaking changes to both CircuitPython and the libraries. Thanks to Lay Semi Pro Prey and Foamy Guy for handling a lot of this. And expect to see further updates in the near future, including to learn guides as we continue to break things. Uh, and then fix the code to match. And that's where I'm at. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right, next up, we're going to kick it over to maker Melissa for an update on Blinka. Hello. So um, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, uh, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week, we had uh, seven pull requests merge, which is more than normal. And uh, that was by three authors and two reviewers. There is one open pull request now, and there were two closed issues by two people and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 58 open issues. And we have 11,366 Pi wheels downloads in the last month. And there are currently 75 boards supported. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next up, is, the next section is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks in our community for the work that they've been doing. Um, and this is done as a round robin, so I will start and then I will go through the list of folks in uh, the notes doc. Um, if folks are marked as lurking or text only, I will read it off for you. Otherwise, I will uh, let you speak your own notes here. So. Let me start. Um, first off, I wanted to thank to our community for holding us to a high standard um, in terms of our uh, Twitter behavior is in, in, in terms of Adafruit and our mods for helping us through that. Um, we could talk about that later if folks want to talk about it. 
Uh, thanks to Dan, Ch Jeff, and Katney for going over the 7 0 backlog with me. And uh, thank you to Jimmo for joining my live stream last week. And everyone watching and Jimmo for having patience while I got it going. I went to, we were like five minutes late. I hit start streaming and it didn't work. So we had to debug that. Did get it working. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, <laughs> kind of wild. Okay. So uh, next up, I'll circle around and say uh, in the notes, we have a group hug from Charles. So thank you, Charles. And next up is Dan. Thank you. Uh, as Scott mentioned, uh, thanks to Scott, uh, Jeff, and Katni, uh, we went through for going through all the open issues in 700, which was the longest, one of the longest meetings we have ever had, but it was very productive. Um, thanks to Seymour 111. Uh, who found a CircuitPython 7 display I.O. bug issue and I uh, was asked a lot of questions and they were able to help me with the diagnosis and pin it down. That was really helpful. And thanks to MicroDev1 and Dave Putz for doing uh, continuing working on bugs and reviewing things that come in um, as, as they happen quickly. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Dan. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. Thank you, Scott. Um, to start with uh, Katni and Dan for their work on the MacroPad library. Uh, I had a chance to play with that for the first time this week and found it super nice to make a, a project I was working on. So appreciate all the hard work that went into that. Um, and then to Jeff and uh, GitHub user, I think it's R, R shelled E or I perhaps. Um, essentially Jeff's calculator project was kind of the inspiration for something I did this week in the, the 3D printed keycaps um, especially I found super cool and I plan to play with a little bit more. So uh, big thanks to those folks. That's all I have this week. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guy. Uh, next up is Higher Effect. Alrighty. It's been a little while since I was in because uh, my whole life has turned upside down. But um, <laughs> here back. I am. Uh, thank you, Scott, this past week uh, for cleaning up the um, uh, sleep code in the NRF port, uh, which was marked for a while. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, worked its way into the new uh, micro bit port. Um, thanks to Mahali and uh, Pranav for having a crack at low power on the SAMD. Uh, hoping to have some more news about that soon. Um, thanks to Brandon Satstrom for having a crack at the STM32L4 port. It'd be awesome to see that get off the ground. Um, and then there's a little bit of a, a status update, but um, I've recently, I'm, I'm going to be transitioning to a new position pretty soon. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everybody who's made this community such an awesome place to work for these last two years. Um, I'm looking forward to, to staying a part of it just uh, as a non-sponsored member of Adafruit or a non-sponsored member of CircuitPython rather. And uh, a, a second thank you to Scott and uh, Lady Ada and the Adafruit team for their understanding and help with that uh, transition and um, being supportive. So yeah, that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Higher Effects. Next up is Jeff. Hello. So uh, first, I want to thank Jerry for testing as always. Uh, and Katni, with your work in the core, we're going to have to start using the phrase level up to talk about what you're doing. So uh, thanks for that and congratulations. Uh, as we've all remarked to each other, uh, thanks for going through the bug list together on Friday. It took a little bit of time, but we're in a better place for it. Uh, and higher effect, all the best wishes for what you're doing next. And uh, it's been nice to work with you. You are unmuted as well, Higher Effect. Oh, oh. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. I'll still be around. <laughs> See ya. All right. Uh, next up is Jerry. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Jeff for all the work you did on the, the OB2640 JPEG uh, demo. It's uh, nice to play with that. And, um, and Scott. To you for all, all that work in getting the micro bit v2 build um build added to this to the repository and hopefully uh I'll actually be able to use it someday yeah we'll get there all right uh next up is katney all right so first up uh hug report to dan for helping me through the underscore pixel buff rename and to jeff for a quick question answered ahead of the pixel buff rename that made things a lot uh easier um, thanks to Dan for the helper code needed to remove GamePad from the Circuit Playground library while still maintaining the current API. Um, as everyone has said, uh, thanks to Jeff, Dan, and Scott for reorganizing the uh, 7.0 CircuitPython issues. 
to Foamy Guy for addressing an issue with the MacroPad library that was causing it to fail to work with the LED animation library. And finally, to Mr. Certainly for helping us track our Discord member numbers each week and keeping us apprised on milestones. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see. I wanted to... Oh. Okay, I wanted to give a hack report to Katni for her first uh, Blinka contribution with adding Rainbow IO, uh, to Fed A2 for the initial work on adding the Beagle 5 Starlight beta prototype to Platform Detect, and to PDP7 uh, for your for getting a lot of good things or great things into the latest Fedora image and group hack to everyone else. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, and last up, we have a group hug from Sylvia. All right. Uh, next up is status updates. Status updates is done in a very similar way uh, to hug reports. So we do this as, as a round robin. But this time we want to hear a little bit about what you've been working on in the past week and what you plan on working on in the coming week. Uh, whew, sorry. Sleepy. <laughs> Big yawn. Uh, let's see, for me, sorry, taking a time code. I merged in the Microbit V2 support. It's still kind of rough, uh, but we'll get back to that soon. I've switched to knocking out issues for 7.0. It's a nice change of pace to make some progress and get some issues closed. I uh, made a PR for the all matches keyword for scan entry dot match. Uh, this is replacing a keyword that is all, which confuses editors because it's a uh, built-in keyword in Python. Uh, so that's in the works. And then I made a PR to remove the MicroPy ports never reset-ish defines at the Atmel SAMD port. Um, if you've ever done an Atmel SAMD thing, it's like this bit mask of pins that you don't want to reset. Uh, it's really weird. Uh, it caused some issues after the LED changes I did. Uh, so I just removed it and just used never reset everywhere, and now it's much clearer. So that's out as well. Um, more issues this week, and then uh, continuing to push the BLE app side of things. Um, that's kind of part of the challenge with all of the BLE stuff that I was doing, is that like you need the host side to be a bit mature as well. So uh, I'm circling off that stuff for a bit just to let it mature a little um, and, and get some other time from some other folks. So um, I will circle back to that after this issue stuff. And then uh, iOS will pick up next month as well because Antonio, who contracts for us, has more uh, availability. All right, let's circle back to the top and go to Dan for their status updates. OK, thanks. Um, so I fixed a, a build issue. We, we had there were some issues uploading circuit python stubs and that was uh we tried to fix that but there was a subtle bug and um it caused the stubs it caused builds to fail and we didn't notice because it was only builds that happened as the results of merges mm. so it wasn't reported in um the issue itself it was only reported to the person who happened to do the merge uh which is as an email message which is kind of obscure so that's fixed I fixed some typos in the keypad module. There were two things that were named the same thing by accident. That's what happens when you do copy paste. <laughs> and I left something else out. That's all fixed. Uh, as Caddy mentioned, I wrote uh, like a half a page of code to turn keypad events into um, states that you can query. Uh, and this thing might be eventually be a little library. <laughs> right now, it's just incorporated by itself into the circuit Python. Uh, Circuit Playground library. And uh, as I said, for two or three weeks now, I'm still working on debugging some audio issues on RP2040. And I'm making some progress, uh, mostly about what it's not, uh, but still working on that. There have been many other bugs that have I've, that have come uh, out as a reason kind of on the side for this. And so I haven't been able to devote full time on it. Hmm. OK, that's it. Thanks, Dan. And uh, I, I can totally relate to how audio stuff goes. So thank you for taking that on. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. 
All right. Uh, last week, I worked on a project for the MacroPad uh, that will kind of help you practice math. It will give you random problems, and you type in the answer. Um, it has a settings page that lets you configure which kind of problems you want to get and stuff like that. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Um, as part of that project, I made some tweaks inside the MacroPad library to make it work with LED animation so that you can get rewarded by having the, uh, the keys play some different animations. Um, I did a sweep through the learn guide repo to make some changes uh, that were based around on disk bit bitmap using palette. Uh, so I went through and fixed up a bunch of the projects that used on disk bitmap. And then uh, also in the LED animations library, I'd always used it for uh, like continuous looping. Um, and so this week I figured out that it has a cycle complete callback and I learned how to use that to make it um, basically just go one, one time through the animation and then stop. Um, for uh, this week and moving forward, uh, I'll be working on a larger effort to fix a bunch of uh, stuff related to breaking changes with 7.x, so uh, a bunch of stuff across libraries and learn guides. I'll be working on that stuff starting this week. Um, I'm going to try to dig into LED animation a little more. I have a couple ideas for some different animations that I like to try to implement, uh, so I'll be trying to take a peek and figure out how that works and how to make my own. Um, and then I also uh, have been meaning to get to for a, a couple of weeks now that the stubs are a little bit easier to install and use. Um, a, a while back, I recorded a video that showed how to use that in PyCharm, but it, it was uh, kind of convoluted. You had to set up a bunch of different stuff, but now it's much easier. So I'm going to make a new version of that video that shows how to install and use the, uh, the stubs. Uh, and that's what I got. Thank you. That, that video might be a good guide as well, like just a short guide. Stubs guide? Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Like su supercharging your editor by CircuitPython stubs or something. Yeah, you could probably do that. Um, cool. Thank you, Foamy Guy. All right, next up is Higher Fact. All righty. Um, so uh, this last uh, past week, but actually really the last couple weeks, which I've uh -huh. been on and off for, um, I, uh, I've recently, yeah, I was uh, accepted to a new position at a local... Uh, car company, which uh, I'm taking just because I'm feeling the structure after COVID. Um, but uh, also, my brother just got back from Hong Kong, and also I have to move, and also there's been a bunch of family stuff, so it's it's been a little bit crazy. But in between everything, uh, I resolved a timer leak in the ESP32 S2 PWM module, along with a number of other uh, issues that were going on under the hood. Um, so I, I kind of did a mild overall refactor of that. It should be much more reliable now. Um, Seem to have solved the issue uh, in the GitHub report. Um, I've been rebasing a, a PR that handles uh, storing exceptions across um, uh, soft reboots. Um, it's taken me a little bit longer than I'd like just because I'm not, I've, I've never really gotten 100% into the heap stuff of CircuitPython. So I'm, I'm just going in there and double checking everything. Um, it also needs some additions to work with the new uh, sleep module and uh, some, some of the additions that are happening alongside next file. So checking that out. Um, and um, across the last couple of weeks, I've been picking away at the uh, sleep memory modules for the STM32 and RP2040 and uh, just, just double checking them for the ESP32 S2 and the NRF52 uh, for use with the next file system. So this week I'm going to be continuing all of that work, um, hopefully wrapping up this exception storage rebase um, real soon if I can, and uh, wrapping up the, the deep sleep uh, memory changes for the next file system, which is implemented but doesn't work in the way you'd expect alongside sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'm hoping to maybe help out with the, the SAMD Deep Sleep stuff. I'm going to see how much I can fit in uh, with that between now and uh, August 2nd, which is when I start my my new thing, um, and uh, just see if I can do any off-the-clock uh, off help with that. So uh, we'll see what happens, and that's it for me. <laughs> Why do they insist on backing up? I don't get it. Um, higher effect, that sounds great. And uh, don't forget to take some time off before you start your job as well. Uh, no. Because usually jobs don't start you with any vacation days, and that's terrible. And it's important to take care of yourself too, which sounds like you have been, which is good. Uh, yeah, I've I've gotten some good some good summertime, so okay. I, I should be off. But... Awesome. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you for all your work, and uh, I think we'll we'll check in privately as well before. 
before you uh, completely wrap up. For okay. sure. I will still be around and I'm hoping to continue contributing. So right. anybody who has questions about STM32 modules or any of the stuff that I've worked on, um, I will be around and I'm, 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 I know you're gonna say you don't have to, but I will <laughs> help people. If they want to work on the things that I've worked on, I will help you. All right. Please ask. Yeah, That's thank all. you. Thank you. Yeah, your comment your comment on the L4 stuff was really helpful too. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Let's go on to Jeff. All right. Pardon my continuing printer noises. Uh, last <laughs> week, the calculator guide I was working on for a while went live, and also some flash savings pull requests got merged. And I do already have a couple more ideas in my back pocket, but I'm not going to give them up just yet. <laughs> um, I also did JPEG mode on the OV2640 camera, which I tested on the ESP32-S2. There is now an example that lets you save a 2 megapixel JPEG to your SD card. Um, there are some problems carrying over the exposure values from the preview on the LCD into the actual photograph. So uh, Jerry was seeing images underexposed. I was seeing them overexposed uh, gonna look for a solution to that sometime in the future. Uh, but this week, uh, I'm focusing on the 700 milestone issues. Uh, I got one PR into review this morning that will close two of those. And I need to grab more from the list because on Friday I was letting everybody but me take the assignments. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to get this library Adafruit ticks into the bundle. Um, it the, the code itself is written, but there's just all the steps that you do to add something to PyPI, add it to the bundle, and so forth, and I need to work on those. And I will be participating, as we mentioned, in that keyboard hack chat this Wednesday. And if you didn't catch the link the first time, it's in the notes document again with my um, news. So check it out. We hope to see you there. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Next up is Jerry. Hi again. Uh, let's see. So I finally got this PR. This, this, this is a really trivial PR to the um, RFM9X uh, library, but uh, learned a lot of things in doing it. There's a there's a, an option to enable the CRC check on the packets and discovered that, that the default setting to have it disabled on RFM9X was not compatible with the Arduino setup, which enables it. And so to make them compatible, we decided we'll go ahead and enable it. But it turns out it's not that simple, because in the in the chip, if you have the default setup, they use what's called an explicit header. So they actually tack a little header on, which tells the receiver whether or not there is a CRC. Hmm. And so the board is smart enough to say, if you put a CRC on it, I'm going to use it. And if you if I'm expecting a CRC, but you don't put one on it, then I'm not going to use it. So it, it's very forgiving um and how that's set up so luckily this change did, didn't break anything an existing code somebody has a deployed rfm 9x it will still work just fine even if the, even if the crc is enabled on their new setup so i was afraid it was just going to be a pain for people to have to adjust but it turns out radiohead circumvents that in their code and has an additional check that unless the two match, it will reject the packets. And I'm, I'm not quite sure why they did that, why they're, but hmm. uh, CircuitPython doesn't, and I, I think it's a better way to do it anyway. But we'll leave it that way for now, anyway. And then um, I did try the Microbit version two, and, for, and the only reason I mentioned this is for anyone else who's trying it, <laughs> I, I couldn't get anywhere with uh, on my Mac um, using Chrome to communicate with the device. So I don't know if anyone else has had any better luck. Obviously, Scott has. But uh, so if anyone knows of any tricks or anything, let me know. And otherwise, keep poking at it as, as it evolves. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, I really do appreciate you trying that, even though it didn't work. But I, I, oh. I, I've had it work off and on for me as well. So it's, it's clear that there's more work to do there. It's all good stuff. <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. Next up is Katni. All right, so I have a fairly lengthy list from last week. I didn't plan on it being that big, but <laughs> it, it kept getting bigger as you I just, typed everything out. You just do so much stuff. So updated the Macropad guide did not have warnings about using the absolute newest circuit Python after 7.0 Alpha 4 was released. Uh, the keypad module was not in Alpha 3, if I remember correctly. And so there were a bunch of red warnings everywhere, and I still got a bunch of feedback on the guide about how nobody could find keypad. 
Um, so that's been removed since now if you just download the latest unstable version, it's it's fine. Um, replace the code elements with embedded code from GitHub. There was an issue with the CI on Learn last, uh, the week before last, where um, it wasn't building because of a incompatibility, Arduino incompatibility. Um, that didn't get fixed until the weekend, so I didn't deal with um, updating my code stuff until the following uh, week, but we wanted to release the guide, so the code was just embedded directly in the guide, which is not a great way to handle it, because then obviously if we need to update the code, you have to go in and manually do it versus doing it on GitHub, so that's why we embed it from GitHub. Um, added the MacroPad library to the bundle. Continued updating the MacroPad library to address bugs and feature requests. Nothing like bug-driven development. Um, Tested a PR on PyPixel buff and merged it. That was the 37 day old PR. Um, it was actually reverting a change I made because something got, uh, something didn't work in 7.0, but it turns out that there was a PR to enable it. And the person that submitted this um, caught that and reverted my change because the original code worked. Um, however, we needed a, re a release of 7.0 that included that fix uh, before I wanted to. Um, merged that PR and that happened. So ta-da, merged. Uh, tried adding color constants to Rainbow IO. Rainbow IO is the new module in CircuitPython that has color wheel in it. Um, Lamore wanted to try adding um, color constants so you could do like Rainbow IO dot red, uh, but we determined that it's not worth the byte loss uh, for now, that once we enable some more um, space saving stuff in CircuitPython, it might be worth it, but for now, um, We'll stick with just color wheel. Published the TCA4307 guide. It's an I squared C hot swappable buffer. Uh, I squared C is not actually supposed to be hot swappable, but Stemma QT makes you really want to hot swap it. <laughs> um, so now we have this this buffer board that basically you just put it's it's got Stemma QT connectors on it, and you put between your microcontroller and your sensor, and you can hot swap until sunset and no problems. Um, wrote up a Macroved HID demo for Noah and Pedro that lights up each key when pressed and plays a different tone for each key. If I understand correctly, I think there's going to be Braille keycaps for it. It's going to be sort of an accessible um, HID uh, macro pad. Um, the tone is so that uh, for folks who maybe can't read the um, the display or, or whatnot uh, can associate the tone with the key. Um... I started the guide for the NeoKey Ortho Snap Apart. It's a um, five by six key grid, um, key matrix rather, um, that's ortholinear. And uh, I now have the hardware in hand for that, so I can continue that. Started a spreadsheet to track the 7.0 uh, Circuit Python API ch breaking changes and the related um, library breaking changes. Created a new Python library called Adafruit Pixel Buff and migrated the code from PyPixelBuff minus the color wheel code, as we talked about. Renamed underscore pixel buff to Adafruit Pixel Buff and aliased back to underscore pixel buff to maintain backwards compatibility. Um, and then put in a PR uh, to NeoPixel and DotStar to use Adafruit Pixel Buff if available and if not, fall back to the previous versions. Uh, and finally, I added Rainbow IO to Blinka. So all of the upcoming code that uses color wheel to make rainbows on NeoPixels, uh, where there is NeoPixel support in Blinka, Rainbow IO will also work. Well, Rainbow IO will work across the board. It's not board specific, but if you're going to use it with NeoPixels, you need NeoPixel support. Uh, this week, I'm going to continue the NeoKey Ortho Snap Guide. Um, I'm going to be doing demos with both the whole thing as a sheet and then also snapping it apart to make little matrices. Um, I'm going to be going over the spreadsheet that I wrote up with the breaking changes with uh, Foamy Guy, who's going to be taking over a lot of those fixes. I need to look into why Sphinx is failing on a Circuit Playground Library PR, and really what I'm trying to look into is how to disable Sphinx uh, on a single thing, although I don't think that's possible. Um, because it's failing on... It, it's, it's a stupid failure. Like, it, it doesn't understand the type of a variable. And so it's claiming that you can't do a thing with it when you can because it's an integer. Um, and so I need to sort out either figuring out a way to tell Sphinx that that it's OK, it's going to be OK, um, or to uh, to disable Sphinx temporarily inside of a specific piece of code. Um, other than that, the Hack Check Wednesday, and once Alpha 5 is released, I'll be updating any code examples that used underscore pixel buff dot color wheel to use rainbow io dot color wheel. 
Um, we'll be waiting until 7.0 is stable to update all uses of the color wheel code to use Rainbow IO because obviously we don't want to update a ridiculous number of learn guides to all require 7.0 alpha 5. Um, but the there are very minimal uses of the underscore pixel buff color wheel and I'm pretty sure 98% of them were me. So um, I will be updating those at least to use Rainbow IO and uh, picking up whatever other miscellaneous stuff comes up. That's where I'm at. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right. Next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, so last week I finished up my cat detector guide and um, I added the Beagle 5 Starlight beta prototype support to Blinka. And I finished up an issue with the mag tags, NeoPixels, and Circle Python 7. Uh, this week I'm working on GitHub issues I'd put off and looking at possible uh SPI issue and, and fix with Blinka and then continue on with the web serial ESP tool fixes for ESP32. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you to everyone for participating in status updates. Uh we don't have any topics in the weeds, so I'm just gonna skip over that and wrap up. Uh, after I take the last time code. So this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for July 19th, 2021. Uh, thank you to everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us work that work on CircuitPython who are funded by Adafruit, uh, continue purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Uh, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. And the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Check the Python for Microcontrollers box on that page and we'll get you going. Uh, the next meeting will be, let me look, because I never had the foresight to look ahead. Um, next week will be on Monday, the 26th. Um, so please join us there. Uh, that will be uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Uh, if you'd like to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the mm -hmm. at CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And with that, we hope to see you all next week. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.